Hey guys, this is Dick from here from the JVPM team and in this video I will show you how to edit the process and the human task forms in JVPM Designer. Here I have a very simple process, it's just a demo and this process, um, in this process we approve or reject some users given some information. So when the process starts, the user can use the process form to enter in some information and when the process instance reaches this approve user human task another human actor is then able to view this data and make a decision either approve or reject this process. So let's just see this information that we need to enter. Here are process variables and we have simple things like first name, last name, and age range. We have an outcome which is decided in the approve user human task. Now let's put um, designer in full screen mode first. Um, in order to start editing the process form we click on the top left corner um, on this little user icon. When we do that, we're presented with this particular window that has two sides. The left-hand side is the editing window. We can type in your code for the uh, process form. And on the right-hand side, we see a live preview window, which updates as we're editing or uh, typing in our code of our process form. In addition, this, this um, preview window, live view window, is able to evaluate our JavaScript, or CSS, uh, or embedded objects, pretty much anything. So as we see, as we're typing, so we have H2, and by the way, the left-hand side, one of the features that it has is completion on HTML elements. As we're typing, hello there, we see that the life window, uh, right side, uh, right window, the life preview, preview area updates as we're typing. So let's start creating our form. Um, another thing that you see on top left corner is a little drop down here. And this drop down includes a number of predefined form widgets. Now these form widgets are little files which um, are completely user defined and editable. And uh, they include some sort of um, either HTML code or style sheets or pretty much whatever you want, some sort of widgets that you would like to include on your page. So let's start editing an, an HTML form. So we're going to use this HTML base page widget, which adds basic HTML code for a page. In the body section, let's first add a header. So we can, for example, use the center tag and the H2 tag and say, enter user info. All right. So after this, we can create our form. So first we can use a form widget that adds in a form so we don't have to type it out ourselves. The next thing we want to do is let's say use a text field for that there is a little text field widget and as you can see it allows our users to enter in some sort of text and for this we're going to use first name and we're going to change the label but we also have to set the proper ID which has to match the name of our process variable. But I already forgot what I named my process variable, but that's okay because the editor includes an autocomplete feature. So if I press Control Z, I can see all my process variables, my globals defined, and also any data, data objects that I have defined in my business process. So let's use our, oops, sorry, first name. There he goes. Now we're going to add another text field for our last name and we're going to give it a proper ID of last name. The next thing we need a drop down we want to present that I mean uh, the age range drop down. So let's use the drop down menu widget which we can again change the label text to age range and here we can start typing in let's say 0 to 18 18 to 30, 30 to 45, and 45 to 65, just some values. And as you can see um, in the live preview area, not only do we see all of the uh, choices in you know, a drop down, but we can also select them and see if that works, just like we would um, when our um, end users see this form in the browser. Now, we need two more things. We need a submit button and possibly a cancel button. So let, let's see we have widgets for that too. So here is a submit button widget. 
fit is pretty fine. So we added a submit button and let's add in a cancel button here as well. So this is the basic form that we can use. We can now <laughs> save this form and then by clicking on user icon again, we can edit the form again. Some of the other features on the left hand side that we have is, for example, we have code folding ability. So we can fold on the head or we can fold, let's say, on the body. If you have a lot of code, this is pretty useful. Another thing that we have do is uh, we have is um, search. So for example, let's say we want to search on age range. All right. And another thing that we have is search and replace. So if I hit control option F, we can, for example, replace age range with age ranges. And there we go. Yes. And we have replaced that right here. Um, so those are some of the features. Um, let's take a look now about doing something cool. Because we have the ability on, in the editor to type in really any code, um, you can not only create HTML widgets, but you, we can also try to create mobile widgets as well. If your end users are, for example, on an iPhone or some sort of mobile device. So for the sake of the demo, let's take um, this form. We can cut and paste because that is also reusable in a mobile widget. <coughs> I'm sorry. And um, let's start with a mobile uh, form. So for that, first, we do have a widget available, which is called um, the mobile base page. And that will basically add that in. Um, for this mobile, I would like to use uh, jQuery mobile. So I'm going to use the jQuery um, mobile includes. And this will actually, in my header section, include the, the mobile style sheet, jQuery, and the jQuery mobile um, JavaScript. Now what I can do is in my content here, I can just paste my form. And here you go. You have a fully functional uh, mobile uh, form. And here you can see, start selecting things. There is some other things that we have to add that we're not going to do in this demo. For example, what happens when we submit. But if we click here, we can see that actually nothing is happening or nothing is being submitted. So this is a way to create uh, both HTML, mobile. If you're using some other technology, we have widgets, for example, for uh, backbone, backbone forms. And we have handlebars included if you would like to start using handlebars um, uh, within your forms and things like that. And really, you can define that yourself. Um, in order to create uh, human task forms, you select the human task that you would like to create the form for and just like in the top left corner you have a little bitty icon that looks just like that is the user icon click on that oh first we have to specify a task name which is good let's call it approval sorry there we go and now we can start editing and here is the same type of thing you have your editing window your live preview window your form widgets the only big difference is in the other completion, because if we press Control Z here, we do not see the process variables. However, we see the data inputs and the data outputs of this human task. So we have three data inputs here, first name in, last name in, and age range. So we can use this to simply present um, the values that we're entering in the process form, and then we can use um, let's say a text field or a boolean value or something to actually um, enter in the outcome value um, which is either approving or rejecting our user end. So this is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy the video and I hope you guys enjoy using the JVPM designer. Thanks.